the dam in its heyday. And really until 1963, it was a very active dam, a very active port. Um, this shows the demolition of it in 1963. So they used, basically used dynamite and blew it up. You can still see today uh, the stairway, and you will still see the 1937 flood marker on the stairs. Okay, so we're skipping over Rabbit Hash, because everybody knows what Rabbit Hash is, and they'll get their own book, I promise. Um, we're going to the East Bend area, and you'll see, you'll see Pyatt Landing, you'll see um, Big Bone Island, all the way down to the end of the county. So we're almost done. And of course, it starts off at Rabbit Hash. Piatt's <coughs> Landing was actually, Piatt's Landing, um, was a home of Robert uh, Piatt um, in East Bend. It's called Winfield Cottage. And he was, I believe, the nephew of Jacob Piatt. Okay? And I know you guys have had a whole program based on them. So we won't go into that too much, but it's now the Duke Energy Power Plant, plant property. And this, this home is no longer standing. <coughs> and uh, Civil War General Richard, Edward Richard Springs Canby of Piazza Landing. And again, uh, he was a famous general, a very well-known general, a very talented general, if I recall, um, who, who lost his life um, trying to uh, get a treaty with the Modoc Indians in California. Um, and so he's, he's probably our most famous um, military hero in Boone County. The Hamilton School. Okay, let's talk about Hamilton for a minute. There was at one time a location called Landing. And it's where Trixie's is right now, gunpowder, okay? And it was platted out. Remember we talked about earlier about places being platted out but not really existing? This was landing, okay? The school, which is now the fire department, was at landing, okay? We get all these names confused between Hamilton, Hamilton Landing, Landing. They're used interchangeably with Hamilton, okay? But really, originally, this was intended to be landing, where this location is. It's not what people call it today, but that's where it was. I promise. I've seen it in the deeds. Um, so this shows the school back then. Um, high school classes were discontinued in 1942, too, due to low enrollment. Um, but again, it was a fairly well off in the 1930s. Uh, it looked like a really good. Um, school district. So this is Hamilton in 1883 and what we did, and I don't have it here, but in the book you see all those buildings again, this is a string town right? Very long along Ryle Road and we've all been on Ryle Road recently and it's you know, so very narrow and kind of scary but um, so everybody kind of lived along the edge there. If you take the current GIS Okay, the river goes almost directly right up to the road. So most of these homes were taken out. And I mean, there was a store, there was a tobacco warehouse, there was a school, there were several businesses down there. And because of the 1937 flood, um, the 1937 flood really took out most of that community. And then with the Markland Dam, it just kind of finished it off and the river is very high there now. Um, Hamilton's uh, Woolen Mill. Now this was part of, uh, from the 1930 recorder. You can tell, I mean, having a Woolen Mill is a big deal right down there. I mean, it was a pretty well off community down there. But again, it's one of those things where by 1930, the building was falling down, you know. Um, and so this is even before the flood. <coughs> You know, it's just one of those things where the, the town was not able to keep up. And the 1937 flood. This picture is actually, okay, taken up in Normansville, up a mile inland from Hamilton. So you can just imagine, I mean, you're talking an 80-foot deep 
uh, flood, and this is a mile inland. We have stories about um, in Normansville the store that just burned down. I mean, just burned down. The store in Normansville burned down like three weeks ago. It was terrible. We we got photos for the uh, for the 1937 flood commemoration. And we got photos like three days before it burned down, and then I have photos from that morning or that afternoon. It's so smoldering; it's just terrible. The, the water was so high that on the top of Ryle Road, okay, by um, by Beaver Road, which is where the store was, they were selling goods out of the second story window. People were pulling up in boats to the second story window and selling groceries and goods from that second story window. That's how high this river was. I mean, devastating to these communities. Big Bone Landing. This is a fairly recent picture. Um, we have Jane, Jane Saddleback down there and things like that. And it is um, it's a popular destination now. Now, we know that there was a lot of activity, both Native American and early settlers going to uh, Big Bone for trading, for salt production, things like that. But I thought this was a really pretty picture of um, that location. Uh, the C.T. Dermont and Big Bone Island. There was an island down uh, right at, um, right near where that landing is. And it was called Big Bone Island. It was a recreational place. People would go to it all the time. And, um, and this shows that, um, that this C.T. Uh, Dumont packet boat, uh, built in 1864, crashed at Big Bone Island in December 1865. Um, the boat actually then was hit by a tornado near Warsaw um, after it was rebuilt. So it was not a good, it, it was a cursed boat, which is, again, kind of cool, but, you know, uh, not good for the people on the boat when you got hit by a tornado. Can you imagine being on a boat and getting hit by a tornado? Where do you go? There's nowhere to go, right? So, um, but that's the island's claim to fame as far as boating history goes. This is the most funny thing about the boat, or about the island, and uh, this is actually the last photograph in here. Okay. So the island was made of silt and gravel, and it was drifting down river. Well, it was drifting down river out of Boone County and into Gallatin County. That was not acceptable to Judge Bruce Ferguson. It just was not. You know, that was our island. We needed to get it back. So he orchestrated a raid to try an invasion to get the island back from Gallatin County. Now, he warned Gallatin County they were doing this, but Gallatin County never showed up to the fight. <laughs> so, so these are all Boone, the Boone County soldiers coming on, you know, eight, uh, 1973. They've invaded with their beer keg and their cannon. Okay? The plane came late, and so they saw everybody partying down there. This is a true story. Saw everybody partying below. He had bombs made out of flower sacks. You can't see it here, but there's little flecks dropping onto the people below. Those are flower sack bombs landing on, it was a friendly fire <laughs> incident. But the, listen, to retaliate, they actually fired the cannon back at, <laughs> back at, at, back at the plane, and apparently the tail was damaged a little bit, but nobody was hurt. And, and the beer keg was secured, so everybody's fine. Everybody did fine, no big deal. And so um, that really tells you Boone County. I mean, and um, the island is no longer with us. What happened was in the uh, 1977, I believe 1977, the really bad weather that we had in, in the blizzard. Um, the river froze, and then when it when it all defrosted and all that, it just kind of scoured uh, the island away. Okay, and so thank you. We're done. Um, I just hear Emmett Witham, Jeanette Edward Smith, Melissa Humphrey, Tony Pop, Steve Forthoff, Joanne McMullen-Suttles, Randy Cochran, and Alice Ryle. Um, 
really for, for uh, donating the photographs for this. Um, you know, I hope you enjoy the book. It was really fun doing the book. And again, it was really kind of interesting to see what was here back then, you know, and because and you don't have a whole lot of evidence of it anymore. Does anybody have any questions? I told you there were going to be a lot of slides. I did, I did. Yes. It wasn't Petersburg laid out to be the capital. No, it wasn't. And that's all we've ever heard. I know, but you know what? There's actually another town named Petersburg um, down by Frankfurt. And uh, from the documents that we have, that it, it was actually that Petersburg that was down near the, the Central Park. So, but no, I've heard that all the time. And so we, it was one of those things where you hear all these stories, so then you go and you try to prove the stories. And that was one of the st stories that we found was actually not very true. So. Uh, when I first started working in Cincinnati, I remember they were talking about all the cobblestones that were put in the streets when they built Cincinnati. And they said about all of those cobblestones came from Big Bone Island. Really? Yes. Well, that makes sense because it's all glacial The water's chill. not there anymore. <laughs> you know, it was all, well, yeah, no wonder it's gone, right? They, Cincinnati yeah. took it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it, it was it was kind of a soft island, so it makes sense. And glaciers did come down this far, so that would make total sense. Do you have any information on when Route 8 was relocated? It was relocated after the atlas was completed in 1883. Because uh, in our GIS map that we have from the county, we have all of our current layers, and then we have the atlas was kind of fit, the pages were kind of fit and stretched to kind of match where they were supposed to go. And there's enough difference around um, Taylorsport to know that that was that was moved. So it was, it was in the 1880s. It was after 1883. So I it, don't have a date. It, it must have been after 1903. Okay, I I don't know. And why do you say 1903? It's because my front porch faces the river and the route <laughs> on the back of the house. Okay, well then that makes sense. That, and that the house I believe was built in. In, eight, in 1903. Okay, okay. So so that's a good point. Now what we can do, if you take my card, we'll go ahead and we'll try to find that date for you. Probably have to go through the Boone County Reporters and just kind of try to figure it out. Um, you know, and because of course... I know where part of the old road bed is. Right, right. Well, isn't that interesting that you can see that still? Um, and of course, you can see other parts of um, Taylor's Port where the road, where it just kind of ends, and you can see. Oh wait, there was a street over there at one time. You know. Yes. It's the John Brown you talked about, the one who uh, has a stone out by the Met Center on the many old time. No. No, he is buried actually on his property in the North Bend area, like right on the river, is where that cemetery is. One little town had a distillery in it. A Petersburg. Name. Petersburg. What was distilled there? It was whiskey. Was it bourbon? I don't know if it was bourbon or whiskey. They just called it whiskey. They did not call it bourbon. So. Curious to know. Well, it, bourbon has a little bit of a different process, right? I, they, they've been calling this all along. I haven't seen it as bourbon. I've seen it as whiskey and all the advertisements and things like that. I just, I think I told you this before, Bridget, but uh, my grandparents were married in Federal Hall, and my oldest aunt and oldest uncle were born there. And at the time, uh, you've got a picture of it, it has someone else's name on it. They operated a store in Petersburg, uh, like a, a general store, right. that had above it uh, where they could show films. And they had like a piano player, and they would have dances and stuff. Like that. And, and that is actually the the Gordon's place. Hall, and also known as the Petersburg Opera House. And that is that is 
building is still there. Right. Uh, gar it had a garden shop in it for a little while. There's an apartment up there now. But the stage is still there. And that, it, that's just fabulous, isn't it? I mean. My son and I actually live upstairs. Oh, do you? What is it? Fabulous apartment. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. It's not a fine lady that owns a garden store, but. <coughs> right, and, and but she owns several different buildings in the community. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. So we didn't we didn't have a whole lot of interior photos for Federal Hall, did we? We just had some no. out exterior. The one that the gentleman took was mainly outside and right. aerial photos. And I've been back there since then. But as you said, once they lost the roof, the house was in great shape until they lost the roof. And once they lost the roof, everything just Right. Did did you say that it burned though too? It did burn, but I think it was I don't. Think it was that, mostly think decay. It was accidental. Yeah. Well, no, I don't. I didn't yeah. mean that anybody. You know, it wasn't arson or anything. Right. Right. But once they burnt and lost the roof, it was hard to keep it going. Uh, everything just. I mean, all the stone is still there. It just fell in on itself. And you were actually looking at trying to rehab it, right? I contacted the lady who owns the property, uh, and she owns basically from 275 almost all the way down to the end of Rockford Ferry Road. Right. And I think she's holding on to that. She's an attorney uh, in Cincinnati. I think she's holding on to the property. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, for, that's like, fine. Big estates maybe or something. Right, right, right. It's great, it's right on the bluff. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandfather, they used to, there was a wagon road that went, well the road, there was a road that went in front of Federal Hall. Uh, and they would go down that road to the river. And they, there's still flat land down there where you can, Gross, people grow stuff out. Yeah. But uh, the uh, the cemetery, I've talked to Pat about this. The cemetery is just they stole the wrought iron gates that used to be around the cemetery. Around, around the all, one most on the, the stones hill. are buried underneath grass and stuff like that. And she just really has no interest. In no, she's just looking at it for commercial property or whatever. Or I also lived at uh, Dam 38 when I was living too. Oh, you did. We didn't talk about that. I didn't no, know that. that. No, that was, there was a gate going in there. My dad worked on the dam, and then they had like little rental houses on the outside. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And my dad, I was probably like two, maybe. Okay. They also but had a picnic that's... area there, too. At the dam. They did have a picnic area. I heard about model, that, right? too. They had a yeah. model of the dam yes. up the top of the hill. Sure. Yeah, I used to play sure. that one as a little. And you could walk with him four foot of the water back then. I know. And again, that's another one of those properties where they ask you not to not to trespass on the Well, that part's gone, but you could go right yeah. there and watch the boats come through the locks. It was, See, that would be awesome. That would have been terrific <laughs> watching that. Well, thank you all for sharing. Um, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.